Grub hemp makes 20 barrels of oil. Mm. No need for pesticides to poison all our soil. People got no food, they got no clothes, they got no rent. Well, right now, it's time Thank you for taking Time for Hemp. I'm your host, Casper Leach. You are listening to Time for Hemp all around the world on Tumblr, SoundCloud, iTunes, iHeartRadio. And uh, we appreciate you tuning in and sharing us. We are a group of people now who are dedicated to ending prohibition, creating original content to present to the world all around the clock. And like a good joint, Time for Hemp is always best when you share us with your friends. It is Tuesday, and on Tuesday we put a spotlight on the amazing, hardworking activists up in Canada with my good friend Kelly Kristen. Good morning, Kelly. Buenos dias. How you doing, Casper? Pretty groovy. How's life in your slice of heaven? Well, you know, every day is a great day. Well, we're just dancing. It starts out that way anyhow. <laughs> we're dancing on clouds here in Portland as well, and I love that. And I know uh, we have a Remarkable guest to uh, bring some great information to our audience today. Yes, we have the wonderful Sarah Sunday from uh, beautiful uh, Ontario, Canada. Are you there, Sarah? I am. Pleased Hello, to be Sarah. Here, guys. Thank you. How Thanks you so much today? for having me on. Oh, it's a great day. Beautiful day here in Canada, in Ontario. Sunny, no clouds. <laughs> it's beautiful. I can't uh, can't wait to finish out the summer. Awesome! 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 So, um, Sarah, maybe uh, to start off with, I'm sure a lot of our guests are maybe not familiar with you. Maybe you could fill us in a little bit about Sarah Sunday and who she is and what brings her to the cannabis industry. Well, um, I'm a grower. First and foremost, I'm a patient, a medical patient, um, consumer of cannabis, lover of cannabis, all things cannabis. Um, and uh, I've been growing for many years. Um, that's super fun. I like to be enterprising and get in, get into um, businesses and interesting businesses. So I've been exploring that recently. And just uh, I like to develop platforms for other businesses to use to promote. Basically, I like to celebrate a Canad- the Canadian cannabis culture and everything it has to offer, all its many areas. So my new thing that I'm working on now that I guess we're going to get into is the the Karma Cup, which is a Canadian medical cannabis competition. I, I call it elite medical cannabis hash edible topical and functional glass competition. And basically we have 15 categories this year um, and it they uh, range from all sorts of different kinds of bud, uh, including this year organic and CBD. Uh, we've got three different shatter categories for each one of the profiles. We've got butter, THC distillate, solventless, and pre-filled cartridge or disposable pen, and then the usual edible topical and functional glass. So that is going on um, in Toronto, October 22nd and 23rd, downtown Toronto. Uh, should be wicked awesome. We've expanded. We celebrate the right. whole is, of Canadian is, cannabis. This is not the first Karma Cup, correct? No, no, no. We've been super um, fortunate to have gotten a lot of support in the last two years. Originally, the Karma Cup was like just a weed competition. I'm a grower. It matters to me that we are able to... Um, I don't want to say compete, but definitely show off our ways with other people, which in this case, in a competitive society, becomes a competition. Competition, that showing off of your wares, makes everybody else want to do better. It creates best practices and standards. We all get together and figure out different ways of doing things, smarter ways, how we can collaborate together and make our lives better, how we can do business together and increase everybody's business, um, how we can continue to help to legalization forward. Um, Like that's what it's all about, basically. That's what it was originally about. Now I've taken all those aspirations and added the festival and the fun portion of it. I had um, such an issue last year because there was just so much support. 
it was really, really hard for me to fit all these supporters in one place that would allow us to smoke. So um, this year, I decided that what we really needed was another festival. Like at this point, we mainly have 420 and GMM as the times that we can get together and um, have fun, network, do business and interact with the general public. You know, those are both in the spring. And um, I don't know, I just wanted to create a larger event where we could all participate that would be inclusive, that, you know, even if you can only afford $15 for the weekend, which is what a weekend pass costs, you can still come, network, enjoy the celebration of cannabis that we're creating, um, enjoy probably free dabs and uh, smoke basically wherever you want, um, you know, no, it's not like a, we're not in the convention center. We don't have, uh, the rules are more about what we make them and less about somebody else imposes on us. So we can actually really be part of cannabis rather than having to go outside to a smoking balcony or go out, out front um, and have problems with people getting annoyed um, in the area. So basically, wherever you're standing, basically you can consume. Right. So is it is it like indoors or outdoors or a portion there? It's both. both. It's both. Um, the only way I'm able to make something like this happen and basically throughout the world, usually in North America anyway, is you take like an open space, like a parking lot and you tents. So that's what I'm doing. I'm I have a large vendor tent. I've got a 100 percent medication area for patients. Um and people like identify as patients. So. Well, I have that too. I have a medication zone that people will vend in. And then I also have a 6,000 square foot um, vapor lounge slash speakers tent. And there's a few booths that open onto that too to deal with that mm-hmm. market. Um, so we've got a variety of things going on. We have music. We have glass blowing. We've got visual arts, we have lots of vendor areas, we've got food trucks, we've got these different sort of vendor zones and zones for people to um, entertain themselves. We're going to have some stoner games type stuff going on on the stage uh, in between the musical acts. Um, On Saturday night for the VIPs, we have a gala that's going on in the Vapor Tent um, where we'll have a catered meal, we'll have... um, entertainment, comedy, music, uh, et cetera. Uh, the next day we're going to, uh, or actually in that vent, in that vapor tent during the day, we have a speaker stage and normal Canada is going to be presenting their annual conference on the speaker stage, as well as we've sort of increased the scope of it and, uh, are exploring all sorts of different aspects of our community and in our society right now. And, what we need to do to go forward, as well as what's been going on and um, sharing various people's experiences um, with life around cannabis. Awesome, awesome. We're all, yeah, yeah, totally, cool. So it's looked like you've really expanded now with like a real vendor tent. You have a spot for like you, you say roughly about a hundred vendors, which is, which is quite large. Right. Yeah, it depends yes. of course, on vendors and what size of booth they take and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's pretty huge. So you're expecting a fairly large turnout. Now, VIP tickets, are they available to the public? Totally. Um, yes. Uh, I haven't actually started to sell the VIP tickets yet. The space is limited in the, um, I can only fit about 350 people in my uh, gala tent. So part of it is seeing how many, because I'm giving sponsors and important people tickets. So part of that is just making sure I can accommodate all the competitors who also get a pass, competitors, sponsors, certain vendors, VIPs, guests, media, et cetera, et cetera. At that point, we will probably have about mm, 25 to 50 uh, at the most VIP tickets, and they will first be offered to judges who have somebody that they want to bring, like a wife or somebody like that. 
Right, right. So they will eventually be offered to the public, but uh, first I need to give a crack at it to people always complain that they can't bring their buddy because their buddy doesn't want to judge or their wife doesn't want to judge. Uh, so I just want to give them an outlet so that they can bring their friend along. Um, but we have general admission tickets to the festival that are on sale on my website, karmacup.com. There's also an application on there. If you're interested in judging, you can uh, fill out the application and we'll let you know whether you're accepted and you can send us payment. Right. Is there, do you have a, a cost for the general admission tickets? Hello, hello. Sarah? I think we lost Sarah. I just hit dial back just in case. It showed red on there. <laughs> Woof, 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 woof. My dog's healthier. He just called my. Somebody just called my phone and uh, interrupted our call. I apologize. Oh, we wondered what happened. Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah, it's we, just we, literally, it, it just took over my phone. I'm like, what's going on here? And how can I make it stop? Yeah, you were like, <laughs> sorry. It, it was, it was, it was like talking. It was like talking to a bad teenager after they found out that you just stole my pot. Hello. Hello? <laughs> Hello? My, look, my pot was in my sock drawer. It's not there. Hello? Hello? <laughs> so, do, do, awesome. Do you remember where you were at? I talk, did I talk about the general admission tickets? You were there, and I was about to ask a Okay, cost. so, yes. All right. let, I'll, me I'll, let, let me do a three, two, you. Let me do a three, two, one, and we'll pick up. Okay, sounds good. Three... Two, one, go. Hey, Sarah, awesome. the, so, the cost, is there a cost? Uh, do you have the, so you have, it's on the website yes. already? So there is a, how much uh, are yes. the general admission tickets? Yes, there are general admission tickets on the website. It's uh, www.thekarmacup.com. Um, there's, you can, there's a link right off the front of the website. You can buy them on the site really easily. It's $15 for the weekend pass or $10 for a day pass. Very uh, good. It includes ins and outs. It's very reasonable. I just wanted to make it so there was n- no excuse, basically, not to attend. Very nice. Very nice. And as there, there's obviously a limit on general admission tickets as well. You have a... Um, well, uh, a limit. I mean, buy as many as you like. <laughs> I would like to get as many. I would like to get as many people. I can. The venue can hold about three thousand people at one time. So I feel like we can uh, pay, buy as many as you like. Please come. Just right. it would be fun. It, it's, a, it's a fun event, um, and it's good to support all these local businesses um, that are basically. Um, at the vanguard, at the front of the fight for us to ha- keep our industry. I mean, like now we're getting legalization, but we have this thing that's appeared that basically they don't want us involved in, in the new legal future. They just want us to go away. So all these businesses are out there putting their neck on the line to try to supply the market, which is like the ultimate form of activism, basically. And they need, we need, uh, a showcase, a place where we can display what we do and market ourselves directly to the customers who need our, our services. And that's what the Karma Cup is providing for people, is a platform, a safe place to um, do direct interaction with their customers and the patients and the people who need our help. Nice, nice, nice. I uh, I know the Karma Cup has been around for a little while. Unfortunately, I've not had the pleasure yet personally to come to one, but um, maybe I should uh, make the trek out this year if I'm available around that time because I uh, always enjoy these type of events. And it's, of course, being in Canada, it's always nice to see a lot of the people that we deal with on a regular basis um, at these events um, and, and support the vendors that you have there, of course. And you say you have some food trucks. That's always uh so you've convinced a couple of the uh, local food trucks to be there for the weekend? Absolutely. Um, we've got some regular stuff and barbecue and some more exotic and interesting uh, trucks that I will release shortly, the names of and pick promo shortly. Uh, 
We actually I, went to a local festival, food truck festival, and talked to many people that had great food, and everybody was so interested in being a part of a cannabis festival. Oh, I couldn't I imagine. Said, Listen, we a, have a. I couldn't imagine as a food vendor not wanting to be partake in your event. <laughs> right? It's just yeah, a, well, it's a no brainer. It, There'll be lots of potheads it, eating food. It's a natural fit for certain, for certain. Cool. So yeah, yeah there absolutely. Will be, so you 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 keyed on a few of the really good ones. That that helps a lot. Yes, yes. We we sampled. Uh, we definitely sampled, and then we inquired as to their efficiency and uh, whether or not they were interested in uh, being a cannabis weed or weed type event. And nobody uh, nobody said no. <laughs> they were all interested. So now it's just uh, you know. Uh, one of our things right now is it's the the Canadian ex- exhibition is on right now. So food truck people are super busy. Um, it's like a huge time of year for them. So that we're we're busy pinning people down and uh, making them commit to our awesome event. Awesome event it does sound like for sure. Um, you have all the categories it sounds like. So regardless of how you like to, are there going to be any consume uh, edibles? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we do shelf stable edibles because, um, all my entries are lab tested and to get something lab tested and, um, the results in before you put it in the bag, you need like two weeks for lab testing and then another week for putting everything in the bag. And then they have to stay uh, stable for another three weeks. Cause we do three weeks of judging, uh, at the karma cup. Last year we did, we had nine categories and we did two weeks. There was a hundred entries, like a hundred oh, entries to judge. A hundred entries? A hundred. I can't, like, wow. like, it was ridiculous. I had people tell me that they basically had to take time off work because <laughs> it was, they couldn't work and act and do the judging duties. So people took it very, very, very seriously um, and are very passionate about, uh, doing a impartial evaluation of the, the products entered. Um, yeah, we have, uh, edible and topical. Those are, uh, this year too. Um, the edible is hundred milligrams of THC maximum and shelf stable. Uh, next year we'll probably change that a little bit and break up the categories, but right now it's still one purchase price, all the categories, every single thing we get in. Um, actually let me just say in in case anybody that's a listener is interested in entering the cup, um, I need to have the entry in my hand, September 8th, there's an entry form on the website, the karma cup.com. There's also, um, an informational page. If you just scroll down the front page, you'll see more info about the cup and entry cup, all sorts of links that you can find more information about the quantities we need, the categories, rules. There's an FAQ with lots of rules. Um, There's an entry form online. So you just fill out the entry form and we get back to you about how you get it to us. There, um, all that information is on the website, thekarmacup.com. September 8th. Yes. I can't say that enough. (laughs) Well, that's uh, important. I, I, I know everybody needs time, of course, especially if there's going to be 100 samples. Uh, you really need a little bit of time to try and uh, successfully uh, work your way around uh, uh, competently judging so many samples. I know a lot, of, a lot of the events I've been to in my lifetime, of course, there are similar type situation where you have so many entries um, it's really difficult to uh, to uh, you know do such a quick judge. I I know when we've had a longer period of time, we've had you know probably a lot of times when I didn't have much time, I was a lot on visual and smell, and not necessarily on taste or um, how much qual you know whether it was did anything for you. Um, you know, that type of thing. It was really, really difficult once you've sampled four or five or six and you're on your seventh sample, very difficult to judge its effect. So, um, and, and I've noticed at events where we've had a lot of time to peruse the samples, you know, a visual 
and uh, a smell. The visual looks great. The smell is great, but it has no effect or the taste is, you know, I've, I've tried ones where it was, wow, it looked great and it smelled great. And it really tasted good when you burnt it, but when you put it in the vaporizer, it tasted horrible, which is really strange because I'd never run across that before. I'd, basing it on the visual and the smell, I would have rated it very high. But after vaporizing it, it fell a lot further down the scale. So it's really important to have uh, a reasonable amount of time to give an honest effort uh, into judging these uh, these types of events. Because it's, let's face it, man, a hundred samples, that's woohoo! <laughs> My eyes are wide open now. <laughs> Definitely awesome. want to want to make the effort to come out there and see you. I'll, I'll be in touch and let you know what my my situation is because I'm always, uh, always seem to be busy, you know, too busy. Not enough, I would love to have you. I, I, not enough days in the week, I use, or not enough hours in the day, I used to say. Now I say there's not enough days in the week. Yep, Just, I fully uh, understand. I feel I'm in the same situation. Well, I imagine with this scope of an event, I mean, if you know, you're looking at you know, near 100 vendors and a bunch of food trucks and uh, 300 uh, uh, VIPs and who knows how many uh, general admissions, this is a really, really turned into a very, very large event. So I certainly wish you well and, and hope that it's uh, extremely well attended. And, and our listeners out there, you have plenty of time uh, to uh, put it in your uh, calendar and, and see if you can't make it and, and support all the wonderful people out there and in our industry, of course, and share some knowledge with some medical patients and that kind of stuff. So um, vapor line, you know, you have everything. Plus, I think you're probably going to have some of the best food at an event ever. <laughs> um, Absolutely. I've, like you say, I've traveled to them around the world, so to speak. And I, I know I can speak of one event in in uh, Barcelona called Spanibus. And uh, again, you know, 10 years ago was a fairly small event and it just continually grew. grew. And uh, everybody was under one roof. Well, eventually, all the food vendors ended up being outside, and which weren't very many of them, of course. There were only two or three. But now, I don't know, there must be 20 food vendors there with trucks and that kind of stuff. And the level of food has really increased, and the, the attendance has really increased. So it's, um, yeah, it's um, um, awesome to have great food at an event like this. I totally agree. It um, keeps people from greening out, too. So Absolutely. <laughs> accessible, well-priced, tasty <laughs> food is definitely a must. It's one of the amenities that people require. Nice, nice. Now, that weather at that time of the year, we can hopefully expect... It's to about people. 16 degrees, usually. 16 right. degrees Celsius. So I, it's like harvest festival type season. Um, you know, wear a coat. Um, yeah, but right. you will be wearing a quote coat anyway at that time of year. So to me, it, you don't have to do anything particularly special. Just put on your coat and your hat and come on out. Um, I mean, we will have areas... The, the vendor tent is heated. The other tent is heated. I don't know that. It might get too hot, in my opinion. If it's 16 degrees outside and you've got lots of people and e-nails and torches and stuff like that going off, um, you know, it might be we, we open up the sides a little bit and get some air in. So we've right. got we've got plans. For we lost air again. Well, Kelly, this sounds like a good time for us to take a... Hello? Well, Kelly, this sounds like a good time for us to take a commercial break and pay our bills. And then when we come back, we'll pick up where we left off with Sarah here at Time for Hemp. Some You are listening to the Time for Hemp Global Broadcasting Network. Please share us with your friends. At Crop King Seeds, we sell the finest marijuana seeds in the world. Grown organically with original genetics, every seed is cultivated for large yields, high THC content, and measured for both CBD and CBN levels. Did we mention we sell more than 20 of the world's best marijuana strains in feminized, auto-flowering, medical, and regular varieties, including White Widow, Blueberry, Purple Kush, Haze Extreme, and so many more. Through our website and friendly call support team, our seeds are available for direct order with speedy worldwide shipping. Crop King Seeds, how may I help you? 
Crop King seeds are also sold in over 100 locations worldwide. Excuse me, I'm looking to buy some Crop King seeds. Look no further, my friend. <laughs> wow, they're here and in so many strains. Buy your seeds now, in store or online at CropKingSeeds.com. Or call us toll free at 1 844 Crop King. That's 1 844 276 7546. Put a smile on our face here at Time for Hemp. And I want to encourage you to go to timeforhemp.com and download the archive programming that you find there. If you have a favorite host and program that you enjoy, you can find all of their shows on the Time for Hemp website. And each host has its own archive page. And there you can find all their past programming. Download them for free. Pass them around to your friends. And let the whole world know that it really is time for hemp. 
We're going to pass this joint conversation back to my joint host here on the big joint broadcast. Don't forget, anytime you hear the word joint, everybody fires up their bowls or pipes or vaporizers or smokes a joint here at Time for Hemp. Kelly, you and your team doing an awesome job in helping the medical marijuana movement have better access to a better way to get their medicine inside their body, don't you? Absolutely. For the past several years now, we've been blessed with being able to give away a quality vaporizer to a medical patient somewhere, anywhere in the world, absolutely for free. And it's a very, very simple program. Um, The requirements are only two. One, you must use cannabis medicinally, and it can be for any ailment. Uh, We're not uh, particular on that. Of course, if you're using it as a medicine, um, we want to help you. The second requirement is that you're basically not able to afford a quality vaporizer. Maybe you're on a disability pension or assisted income, uh, welfare, or or no income at all, and um, find it very difficult, of course, not only to pay rent and and buy food, but uh, access quality medication and, and be able to have what you need to help you with your ailment. And um, a lot of people, maybe they never smoked in their lives. And a vaporizer is, is, is a really real uh, advantage to the medical patient. Number one, um, it is better for their health, of course. Um, eliminates well over 20 car- carcinogens that are created by combustion. Um, so for a lot of medical patients, this is a big plus. Um, the other huge bonus for the medical patient is Vaporizers are horrendously efficient, and uh, medical patients, which I've I've dealt with for more than a decade now, pretty much all of them report at least 50 and as much as 70% reduction in cannabis consumption once they receive a quality vaporizer. They're not magic. They're just more efficient. Um, They recover more of the active ingredient uh, because there isn't the intense heat uh, from combustion to burn it away. So it's a huge advantage uh, to medical patients. So if you're listening today and you fall into that category, or if you're listening today, you probably know somebody if you're involved in the medical community, medical cannabis community, anywhere in the world, it's 100% free. Um, Certainly let them know about it. And all you have to do is send me an email to Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, at kdkwholesale.ca. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and uh, we'll put you in the hat, and hopefully we draw, and and, uh, we can send you out a a quality vaporizer absolutely 100% for free. And on behalf of the medical marijuana movement, Kelly, thank you so much for making that happen. It's amazing that you and your team are nice enough to do that, and uh, I know that there are people who have appreciated uh, the benefits of your generosity. So thank you again for those who that you look out for. With that said... We're going to pass this back to our joint guest here with our joint host. And, Kelly, you guys are having a fun time up there in Canada, it sounds like, every year. Absolutely. Things keep getting better. We're uh, moving towards legalization. Um, We recently had a decision where um, uh, you're familiar with the Canadian situation, of course. uh, Medical patients that started with the program in the very beginning had the option of choosing Um, whether they grew for themselves or they had a designate grow for them or purchased from the government and or a licensed producer, which in the beginning they really didn't exist. So the medical patient was stuck with generally growing their own because what was available from the government really sucked. And, uh, And if they couldn't grow their own, having a designate grow for them. Several years into the program, the government decided to change it. And at a certain date, sorry, I'm unfamiliar with that exact date, patients who, uh, new patients who uh, qualified for medicinal cannabis were no longer given the option to grow their own and they had to purchase from a licensed producer. Just in very recent history, a decision came through the courts where now all medical patients are now allowed to grow for themselves. So uh, regardless of when you started with the medical marijuana program in Canada and you're a patient, you can now grow your own cannabis, which is a a huge blessing for uh, 
So it's certainly some of the people that are on limited income. So it's a huge thing, right, Sarah? Absolutely, it's amazing. There'll be tons of new growers too. And as well yeah. as I believe the patients that were under the injunction that were unable to move their addresses will also be able to apply under the new system. So they will also be able to restart their growth. And I know so many people that had to move or had other circumstances in their lives that uh, enable that disabled them from being able to use their licenses anymore. Perhaps their marriage yeah. broke up or something happened uh, like that. So it I, I, it's just a real blessing um, for all patients that they're able to, to have the choice to grow their own medicine again, which is um, really the best thing we can do. I just wanted to take one second and say thank you, Kelly. I was unaware that you were doing, that you were giving out the vaporizers. Um, that's just a really awesome thing that you're doing for the patients. I, I Wow, I'm just really touched by that because I know from my personal experience that the vaporizer is, if if I am in really bad pain, like I, I'll share with you that I have um, bad migraines that I've had since I was uh, my te early teenage years um, and as well as tension headaches and they come and go with various levels of severity and really the only time I'm ever able to keep them truly under control is with adequate medication through cannabis. And if I'm not able to prevent, but I have to do like um, acute pain management, the vaporizer is 100% the best tool. Um, I've never had anything approach it in level of e efficacy as well as um, before I grew and I was buying cannabis, um, it was definitely the most efficient way to consume. So I, I'm fully in favor of the vaporizer as the, the patient's best friend in uh, treating oh, yeah, for illness. Sure. Oh, yeah. as, as you know, um, you, you yourself know a lot of medical patients. And um, when I first latched on to a quality vaporizer, uh, which is the product I actually started my company with, one single product, and I brought it to North America, and I was just all excited about the product, and I thought, you know, the people that can use this the most are the medical patients. So I went there first, and I discovered that I was correct. The people that could most benefit from it were the medical patients. But what I didn't know was that I, I quickly found out that most of the medical patients that I saw or was first introduced to could never dream to afford a quality vaporizer. It was nowhere near in their budget because they were on assisted income. Here in Alberta, what they call ACE, assisted income for the severely handicapped. They barely, you know, living in a big city like Calgary or Toronto, you know, rent is high. Um, you know, so just to pay rent and buy food was a real struggle for these people, let alone purchase their medication. And then, you know, certainly dream, never dream of owning a quality vaporizer. So I knew that once we started to have success with the company, that that's where I would start to give back. And we've been doing it for several years now. And I've had the pleasure of being able to give away quite a number of the, of the herbal air vaporizers. Um, and some of the great feedback we get from these people, um, it's not only the fact that it's a little healthier, it really, really helps them in their pocketbook, which was probably for them a bigger advantage. Um, the financial aspect was really a bonus for them. So yeah, it's been a pleasure and we continue to do it. And I'm sure there are some people in your circle, you can let them know that there is a free vaporizer out there and we certainly love giving them away. I will absolutely let them know. I mean, it is, without a doubt, the most useful um, invention ever, probably, for the uh, uh, medical cannabis user. So thank you so much for that. It's really wonderful. Yeah, you know, well, I'd like to say the, uh, the, the thanks we get in return is well worth what we uh, put out in vaporizers, that's for sure. Anyhow, back to your event and the wonderful vendors and food trucks and glass blowing. Do you know how, how many uh, how many glass blowers you're going to have? Are, are and are people going to be able to? Is it is there a competition or is the general public going to be able to say, hey, the X blower, can you make something like this for me? Or is it demonstration, Absolutely. competition? 
or open for business, basically, is what I'm asking. Um, in all of the above, um, there's um, there are five stations, five flames. We're having a competition. Um, uh, we're we're uh, we're having a. There's actually a few different categories in the competition for various types of glass products. Uh, we are also having one person, like the, the fifth person, uh, demonstrate, just demonstrate whatever they're uh, creating at that moment. Uh, so we've got those two aspects. Plus, we have a artisanal glass marketplace um, for the artists to sell their wares uh, directly to the public to have personal interaction uh, with the um, with their customers and their fans, and certainly if members of the public would like to uh, commission them or do whatever they do whatever that you know um, I, the whole point of the festival again, I bring it back to promoting the best of Canadian cannabis culture, and so that 's just part of it is sh allowing them to show off and allowing them to sell and have direct interaction with their fans. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds like a very hands-on event, something that's grown from the grassroots and now has, has turned into a, a real uh, real event, like you say, music and glass blowing, and vapor lounge, and vendors, and uh, of course the Karma Cup, which was the basis or the beginning of everything. Um, it's really come a long ways obviously uh, through uh, a major part uh, of, of yourself. I'm sure it took a reasonable amount of your time in the beginning, and I'm sure now it's become almost a full-time position to put on uh, an event of this magnitude. Um, I commend you, and it just goes to show you that, um, you know, you've put some effort into this, and uh, you started with great intentions, you still have great intentions, and it just grew along the way. That's really, uh, really awesome. And we thank you for that. We just don't have uh, as many of those types of events in Canada as I would like to. And uh, I certainly uh, applaud anybody who does anything because of the, you know, certainly in years past, it wasn't so rosy the situation in Canada as far as cannabis was concerned, um, but also through events like yours we've been able to prove to the public uh, respectable, responsible use of cannabis by adults in these environments. And, you know, I've never heard of any uh, police interaction really with any of these events other than uh, uh, the one I was at where uh, the floor collapsed there. And yeah, there was some injuries and a couple ambulances and yes, the police attended and, and that was, that was the reason. It wasn't because we were unruly or there were problems or it was an open marketplace selling cannabis or doing anything like that. Um, the vapor lounges, seed companies have been in business for over 10 years. You know, there's never been any incidents at any of these venues or events or businesses over the years. It really goes to show you that uh, um, the cannabis community really seems to be... Um, just above average in that respect. Um, we just don't really seem to have any problems. And I know your event is the same. I, I am going to make every effort to attend this year, um, maybe even try and get some booth space if we have time and, and that kind of thing. Um, I really like to be involved in as much as I possibly can, coast to coast, ever since I started KDK. Um, so yeah. One way or another, we're going to become a bigger part of your event. Maybe we just as little as send you some stuff to give away or uh, something along that lines. But um, or as much as attending and having a booth and being a part of the show. So um, I'm I'm very excited for you and very excited for the city of Toronto. You definitely have so much going for you. With, other than where I'm here from in Calgary, where we basically got nothing on the go but um, um, hopefully uh, in terms of legalization once that happens uh, Alberta itself will open up and be a little more forward uh, like Ontario and British Columbia. 
One can only hope, really. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, and I, I think it'll just get better. I think so. I think we're on that path already. I think we've already proven that we're um, through many events over many years now. And, and, and you know, all the head shops that are out there, people that put their necks on the line in the beginning and continued to push things and the medical patients who stood up to the government and said, hey, you know, get your heads out of your butts and realize that cannabis is a medicine and treat it as such. And also with that, with legalization will become, there will be more testing and there will be more successes with patients and they will really start to study this plant because uh, not only THC and CBD, which are currently at the forefront, there are so many more elements to this plant that they have yet to discover. So, um, yeah, as we continue to move forward, it's only going to get better, uh, not only for the patient, for the recreational user, um, but also in terms of the medicine and the things that cannabis um, can help people with. I have the recurring call. Um, as far as the show goes, um, it's always been a pleasure to do the show with Casper. And Casper's been at it for over 20 years, and he's starting to see the wonder of legalization around the world, uh, not only in the United States, but in South America is very fast moving right now. Uh, Canada is moving towards legalization. Um, funny enough, the forefront runner, Holland, is sort of in a regression right now. But um, basically, in general, around the world, cannabis is uh, becoming not only accepted or it's basically been accepted by the general public since the 70s but um, not by the medical community really until more recent history and very soon to be the recreational community and it's moving to a place where it always should have been never should have been outlawed and all the billions of dollars and lives harmed um, due to cannabis uh, uh, prohibition um, soon will be eliminated, hopefully worldwide. And I can tell you nothing really prepares you for uh, the reality of legalization after it's been outlawed for so long. Uh, I lived in Indiana before moving to Portland, Oregon. And in Indiana, if you have an ounce or more, you could be facing long jail terms and fines and lawyer fees and just a nightmare just for being caught with a little over an ounce. And uh, when I moved to Portland, I, even though I had read in advance in magazines and heard people talk about how it's legal, they can go in and buy it here and they get it for free. It doesn't. You don't get your mind wrapped around that concept until you actually walk into the environment. And I know Kelly's heard me say this before, but when I first moved to Portland, Oregon, I'd find myself in little marijuana shops or pot shops or people's large gardens, and I'd be waiting for the director of the of the film that we were in to yell, cut, take the marijuana plants back to the prop room, because it just seemed so unreal that it was like a Cheech and Chong movie that was being made. It was just hard to put your mind around it for the longest time. And uh, now that I've lived here, I can't imagine it being outlawed. I can't imagine living in an environment where it's now outlawed. I can't get my mind back around that concept. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's particularly awesome for sure to, to, uh, to people, you know, like you say, you moved from a state that was, uh, pretty harsh on your, uh, on, on cannabis to a state that wasn't so harsh and, um, the business opportunities, the, uh, general public, just people who use, cannabis on a recreation basis the lifting of that you know oh my god you know I'm a, being a criminal um, it just it did, never made any sense and uh, yeah it's, it's huge to be uh, involved in it at this time and uh, again thanks to people like you two um, you know the Karma Cup the Time for Hemp show um, you know these are all things that brought legitimacy and uh, respectability to cannabis. And uh, it's awesome to be a part of that and to know people such as yourselves. Sarah, how you did know, you get involved? 
Sarah, how did you get involved with the marijuana movement? Did you just wake up one day and go, well, you know, I think everybody should get high and I'm bored. So I know I'll dedicate my life to being an activist and maybe even get tossed in jail. Now that should jazz things up. <laughs> yeah, I just woke up one day and I did that. No, um, <laughs> it was a gradual process like anything. Um, I was a consumer um, from my, I guess, late teenage years um, on uh, or mid-teenage years on. Um, and uh, eventually, uh, fast forward, I, I had these migraines and I sort of discovered that uh, cannabis helped me with my migraines. And it also seemed to help me with my perennially bad stomach. And then, you know, I noticed, uh, then I met somebody, a friend who... Um, uh, Neve, uh, from calm. Uh, I met him and he basically showed me that there was like a, a medical, there was a real medical thing going on. I'd sort of heard maybe that about there was like this dispensary place or the, the compassion club called TCC. I'd maybe heard that from somebody, or maybe I'd asked somebody to pick me up some weed there at some point in time, but I had no concept of the real like range and breadth of the, um, of the ability of cannabis to help patients and such as myself and all my many conditions. So eventually um, I got my, I got my doctor to sign my compassion club card. I got even more um, active with the compassion club and um, vol- helped them out with various things. Um, and and uh, then we got raided actually before this, I got my medical license and that, that changed my feeling about everything. I felt way more safe and secure um, and, and right, like suddenly a switch changed in my mind. But we got, uh, one day we got raided. This was years ago. And, um, you know, you get that terrible feeling you're under threat. And I, I think I hadn't even uh, purchased my medicine that day. So I was, I was, I had nothing. And you, you really, you realize that at any moment it's still illegal. You can, they can touch you, come down on you and hurt your life. Um, they're going to say to you, you know what? We don't care if you need this for medicine. It's wrong. You're not having it. So we had that experience and I helped calm, um, organize their, their response, their protest, um, make signs, get people involved, make pamphlets, give them out, blah, 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 Mm -hmm. uh, get people there. And from that, um, that experience and then later on the free mark, um, campaign where we uh, went to MPs' offices and uh, uh, sort of did a sit-in almost. Um, uh, conservative MPs that were, like, for instance, Rob Nicholson, the, uh, the minister that was denying uh, Mark's return to Canada and such. Uh, so, you know, those uh, activities, those associations with people who are longtime activists, um, really changed the way I thought about my role and um, what I could, what was possible. And I, uh, I always knew uh, I, I've been a project manager, so I already knew how to make things happen. So I just sort of melded those two things and um, went full on activist. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what brought about the karma cop? Are you say that you were, had an interest, I guess, in, in, in trying new stuff or, or sharing information? Um, well, um, I always like to do things. Um, I get a vision and I, I'm like, well, you know, maybe we should do it like this. And I'm not the type of person that goes up to the person who's doing that and says, why don't we do it like this? I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to do my own. Basically. So I had, uh, for, as a grower, I, there were certain things that would attract me to being in a competition, like knowing the most of the standings, like where I placed, like if you, in many of the other cups, if you didn't get first, second or third, you weren't even aware of how well you did or whether, um, did we lose Sarah again? Yes, we did. So it's prop. No, sorry. I have it on do not disturb. I do not understand. All right. So, <laughs> uh, Three, two, one, go. Okay. So, as a as a grower, I wanted to have a properly run and organized cup that I would get value out of. Um, we do like a profile on every entry so that people that are interested in creating businesses are able to sort of have a profile of 
their entry online and uh, be able to use that to further their uh, business interests um, and to just demonstrate their quality. And, and that uh, we add all sorts of descriptive uh, questions about how the entry was grown and um, or extracted or whatever so that um, patients are able to later on or anybody check out our website, thekarmacup.com, and we have a, st- a portfolio of all the entries going back for the last two years, and we will again this year. And there's lots of information in there. There's a picture, a beautiful picture that we've had taken uh, from, from a product photographer, um, some information about the entry, where it placed, a lab test. Um, that's another thing. I pay the big bucks and I get the lab test done. Um, so that's of benefit to the judge because they don't get bad product as well as the, uh, person who's entering because they, uh, get a copy of the test result and that people get to see online how they, they've, that they have create good product and, um, as well just for the average consumer liking to geek out and look at information online about cannabis and pictures and, um, compare various strategies in growing or extracting or whatever else. Excellent. Well, it certainly has come a long ways uh, and uh, through a lot of effort on your part, no doubt. And uh, onward and upward, so to speak, bigger and better is uh, is the way to go. And, and uh, yeah, it's going to, it's been a success in the past. So I see no reason why that's, that's going to change. And um, yeah, and we are down to our last couple of minutes here on the big broadcast. This gives you an opportunity to put a spotlight on your favorite URL and uh, or organizations that you want people to find. Sarah, awesome! Um, just check us out online, uh, thekarmacup.com. Uh, we're also on, on Instagram at the Karma Cup, Facebook, the Karma Cup, Twitter, the Karma Cup. Um, we, we welcome volunteers, media interests. Uh, you can buy uh, general admission tickets there. If you want to judge, you can apply to judge. If you just want to get some information about the festival, we've got it there. There'll be more information released soon. Um, I'm trying to do a little release every couple days to uh, in, uh, add to the enjoyment and fun anticipation of the event. So thank you so much, guys, for having me on. This is wonderful. And Kelly? Well, thanks, Sarah, for being on and uh, allowing us to bring your event a little bit, hopefully, to a few more people that weren't aware that it's, it's around. Um, again, to uh, for me, uh, any medical patients who could use a quality free vaporizer delivered straight to their door, send me an email to kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, at kdkwholesale.ca. And I want to thank you all for turning in and making this part of your day. Don't forget, we have other hosts on the Broadcasting Network dedicated to raising Prohibition's message that it must end. And we have lots of great music to tune into and share with your friends as well. Also, archives are available for free download. We got uh, cartoons that you can download and share with the press and add to your blogs and we are growing marijuana live on the website so go to timeforhemp.com click on the live gardens and you can see some marijuana growing live right there in front of the camera in real time so we are doing what we can to raise the voice of the marijuana movement and like a good joint we are always best when you share us with your friends remember the next time you hear me you'll know that it's Time for him.